What's bad for first-time homebuyers is great for older homeowners who may wish to tap into a portion of their home's value. Housing Wire's Data Digest reports the nationwide aggregate home equity on properties that still have a mortgage has increased $1.3 trillion in just the second quarter of 2024. 62 is a pivotal number for reverse mortgage lenders, being the minimum age for the home equity conversion mortgage, or HECM. But it's also the percentage of U.S. households today that still have an outstanding mortgage balance. Housing Wire reports while many states have seen moderate to significant growth in home equity, there are some that are seeing notable declines in home values and the equity held. Texas, North Dakota, and Oklahoma saw modest drops in home equity. Home equity increased the most in California and states in the Northeast, most notably New Jersey, Maine, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. However, Oklahoma and North Dakota have a relatively high percentage of underwater mortgages at 3.9% and 3.4% respectively. Presently, declines in home values have been limited to specific metropolitan areas. A few notable metros that have seen a drop in home values include Houston, Las Vegas, Austin, Kansas City, Miami, and San Jose. On a larger scale, the property data firm Adam reports California, New Jersey, and Illinois are at the risk of significant drops in home values based on three key indicators, including the number of underwater mortgages, foreclosures, and higher unemployment rates. Adam Chief Executive Rob Barber said, With the housing market still facing challenges, it's crucial to closely monitor regions where key indicators suggest a higher likelihood of issues. Austin, Texas and Cape Coral, Florida saw the biggest drops in home prices in the last year, that according to the American Enterprise Institute's Housing Center. Other Florida hotspots such as Lakehead, Tampa and Crestview are also experiencing a real estate downturn as residents are attempting to sell off their condos. Last Wednesday, the Fed exceeded expectations of Wall Street by slashing the central bank's key short-term interest rate by 50 basis points, or 1.5%. This brings the Federal Reserve's Fed funds rate to a target range of 4.75 to 5%. Now, why does this matter to reverse mortgage professionals, and what does this have to do with a HECM's baseline interest rate? That's based on the 10-year constant maturity treasury rate. We'll get to that momentarily, but first, the Fed's decision reflects the central bank's confidence that inflation is trending in the right direction toward its target rate of 2%. However, some economists believe that the rate cut is a signal of troubling economic headwinds as revised unemployment data reveals that job growth was much weaker than initially reported. CNBC reports the Fed sliced a half percentage point off benchmark rates in an effort to head off a slowdown in the labor market. How far the Fed's easing of interest rates will go remains to be seen. However, the Fed's dot plot of predicted interest rates from 19 of the Fed's FOMC members anticipates another 50 basis point cut by the end of this year, a full percentage point in cuts in 2025 and a half a point in 2026, all which of course depends if inflation remains stable. Now to the CMT and the Fed funds rate. The Fed funds rate is a short-term interest rate that reflects the interest that is charged when depository institutions lend reserve balances to one another. The 10-year CMT rate, as the name suggests, is a long-term key interest rate that reflects investor expectations for the economy and interest rates in the next decade. The 10-year constant maturity treasury rate represents the yield or the interest rate on U.S. Treasury securities that have a maturity period of 10 years. Constant and that the rate is an average of yields across several treasury bonds that are adjusted to reflect a consistent 10-year maturity. Now that said, the historical pattern of equities and treasury securities reveals that cuts in the Fed funds rate are typically followed by a reduction in the 10-year CMT, which is good news for reverse mortgage lenders and would-be Hackham borrowers. And it's time for our monthly installment of Reverse Market Insights Market Minute with John McHugh, where we can learn more about the latest Heckam origination and endorsement trends. John, thank you for joining us. What do you have for us this month? Well, thanks, Shannon, for having me back again. Really appreciate it. As we do every month, we're going to start with July uh, case numbers. 
So they actually rose by nearly 17% to 3,438 case numbers. Most of that was, you know, from the new equity takeout, which uh, gained over 14.5% to 2,840. Purchase had a really amazing jump at over 50% to 215. And refinances had a second straight gain. Uh, in fact, in July, they gained over 20% to 383 case numbers. The great news here is that we saw a significant increase in applications in July. Uh, and with my conversations with originators, their level of activity really seems to be picking up also. So that's you know really great to hear. Purchases have been pretty strong uh, all this year. Refinances have stayed fairly strong given our current rate environment, especially. Um, so this bump in case numbers in July is you know, really interesting and, and good to see. And with the Fed rate cut, we'll see if this jumps even more significantly in the coming months or not. So that will probably take a couple months to really figure out though. July endorsements uh, overall uh, increased 8% to 2,274 loans. Uh, we can see that uh, you know, endorsements were up 8%, competition was up by over 3.1%. Uh, basically, all of the regions were up on the month or at least flat. Uh, the Southeast Caribbean was actually flat month over month. The Midwest had to really uh, had, had the largest increase at over 38% to 188 loans. And the Rocky Mountain region also had a really nice increase of over 22% to 209 loans. So overall, some really positive numbers here. This is where things get a little bit more interesting when we start looking at performance by channel. So retail was down by 2.6%, but wholesale was up nearly 27%. You know, it's not really rocket science here when we start seeing some of the significant declines in the expected rate lately. Uh, you know, just brokers can be a little bit more nimble, can be quicker to take uh, advantage of some of those, those things. Whereas the larger lenders just, you know, they can't move quite as quickly. So. Uh, speculation is that's kind of a lot of what we were seeing here. As far as the top 10 lenders are concerned, you know, five of the top 10 showed growth. Uh, Good Life rocketed up 969% to 139 loans. Uh, Longbridge was up 40, 416 loans for almost 45% gain. Fairway was up by 21.5%. Boz was up 18.6%. And Guild added another uh, 5 plus percent uh, to 59 loans. So uh, overall, you know, half of the lenders did really well. The other half, uh, you know, were, were lagging a little bit behind in July. Uh, but that goes back to the retail section that we just looked at. Overall, July was a pretty good month and, and the increased case numbers is always a really welcome sign. So with the Fed uh, rate cut, that came out, you know, like I said, it's going to take a couple of months to see what trends that really, you know, brings, you know, for us for, you know, for an industry. So tune in next month to see where case number assignments land uh, and did the rate cut really actually make any difference in a short term when we tell that or not. So come back next month to see what happened. Thank you. And we'll talk to you all next month. And that concludes this week's episode of Hackam World Weekly. If you'd like to listen, if you're on the go, perhaps, if we don't want you looking at your screen while you're driving, then be sure to catch our podcast on Apple Music, Spotify, or on Podbean. Thanks again for joining us, and be sure to return next week for more reverse mortgage news you'll only find here at Hackam World.